Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and welcome to a special episode of Hornbill TV's Chill Out. Before we start, I would like to wish all the viewers a very happy World Music Day. Today for this special World Music Day episode, we have three very passionate artists with us. We have none other than Coco Savino, DK Lamtour and Sujande. Coco Savino has been in the music scene for a while. Known for her soulful and captivating voice, she has made a mark in the music scene in Nagaland over the year. Next, we have TK Lamtor. TK is a pop, soul, R&B singer, songwriter hailing from Mokokchung. TK's contributions to Nagaland music scene have not gone unnoticed. His outstanding talent has gar garnered recognition through several Nagaland music awards, underscoring his impact and popularity within the local music community. Last but not the least, we have Sujande. Specializing in alternative indie, folk and soul, Sujan is known for skillfully combining elements of power and tranquility in his captivating vocal performances. Since embarking on his musical journey in 2018, Sujan has achieved numerous significant milestones. These three are creating a niche for their work within the industry. The poetry and performance they put in their work are gradually earning them fans. Before we speak to them, let their music speak for itself. Hi, this is TK Lamtour and the song is called Sunshine from my upcoming EP. <laughs> Walked away from a loud of blues Wishing I could finally find some use I've been so long overdue with Getting over all that I've had to lose <sighs> Falling in and out, have no clues For whatsoever I'm lost Cause I'm a star and accused No matter where I get washed up Your corners and your love is what I choose Forget about whatever they had to see about you When you said forever, yeah that is what I do Standing here together, we know what to do Your love is what I'm gonna choose How's it I could be so used To fall on my back and do my just fall with you I'm not afraid of getting bruised I'm having my life saved all over by you Finally found some sunshine, sunshine Sunshine, sunshine in you Sunshine, sunshine Somber, lucky I found you. Yeah, I found you. Well, people said I've had much to lose. Have been afraid, oh no, now that I found you. Yeah, I need you. I honestly said, forget about whatever they had to see about you. When you said forever, yeah, that is what I do. Stand here together, we know what to do. Love is what I'm going to lose How's it I could be so used To fall on my back and do my just fall with you I'm not afraid of getting bruised I'm having my life saved from over by you Finally found some sunshine, sunshine Sunshine, sunshine in you Sunshine, sunshine
above Getting high on drugs Hell on to the skies On our own disguise Set me free above There's nothing you can do Who we are to fall in love the like lovers on the screen Time again we fall apart Like we weren't meant to be Always swirling through the sea Like a bird you set me free Without anyone else Without those judging lights Just the two of us Set me free above There's nothing you We fall apart Like we weren't meant to be Always oh, swirling through the sea Like a bird you set me Welcome back. Now that you have heard them sing and you've heard the music, it's time to get to know them more. So, hi, thank you so much, Sujan, Coco, and TK. We have had a long day recording. Thank you so much for, we took a lot of your time, but thank you so much for coming here again and agreeing to have this conversation with us. So, uh, first I'll start with Sujan, I guess, <laughs> since you're the nearest to me. What have you been up to all these days? Uh, any new music coming out, working on anything? I recently had my show, um, that's the Listen event. And then right now we are working on our new tracks, new singles, so we are into it. And what about you, Coco? Um, working on a track, and apart from that, just busy with uh, music school works. And what about you, TK? <laughs> I've just started a project. I'm working on a new album, actually. Starting with you, uh, TK, you're not based here, actually, yeah. right? So uh, tell us more about that also. And since our viewers might know about your music, but not, uh, might not know about uh, you personally, so tell us more about what you do and all the stuff as well. Uh, actually, I'm based in Himachal Pradesh. Uh, I'm doing my PhD out there in Olari culture which is like a branch of horticulture. We specialize in uh, vegetable research. So I'm trying to finish up my PhD. My research work is ongoing. So final steps are there. And then music is again your... Music is there again. So you're juggling both. I'm right? juggling okay. both. <laughs> we'll come back to that again. But then again, Coco, you are teaching, right? Teaching music also. So how is it go uh, going? And I would also want to know how you teaching music, it benefits you also as a... Uh, singer songwriter yes so I teach vocals and piano as well so I mostly teach um, the younger kids so um, 
in in the sense of uh, benefiting me, I think uh, there's more. There's a lot to learn, you know, from from giving back or from teaching, in particular. So um, it's, I wouldn't say it's um, an easy task whatsoever, but I enjoy what I'm doing. So yeah, it's great. <laughs> I want to buy you to done. <laughs> Been up to my projects and then uh, side works at home. So that's more like it. And moreover, Sujan, would you like to tell our viewers more about you as well? Because Sujan, look at my nose. Now we're gonna be like again, people. Now they'll be curious. So it'll clear that out also. So um, my my dad is Mongoli, and my mom is Hao. So that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's why. That's why the Sujan day. Now, um, going back to you know. History now. Let's dig in the history more. I want to know what, uh, how, and when did you guys get into music, and why? Let's start with that. Maybe anyone who wants to go first. Maybe yeah. All right. So basically, when I was a kid, my parents introduced me and my sister to you know uh, classical music. So we were trained classically in piano. I think I was in second standard or something. And then we got into church music. I got into be a, a what a, a choir, and then high school happened. And music has always been you know a big part of education for us. So like I've been performing ever since. But the first song I started uh, like you know started writing was in college when I decided maybe you know I should give it a try. Okay, what about you, Coco? I think about the theme. I started very early on, but I think uh, professionally would be after my BA. So that was what four, four or five years back. So that was when I, you know, started um, professionally. Yeah. For me, it's more like uh, school days. My dad introduced me to keyboard lessons, and from there, guitar. Yeah, school days, school bands, and then I was like, I have to do music. <laughs> you have to do music. Yeah, to do music. <laughs> <laughs> now coming back to your music, um, I mean we all know that all three of you, you guys are known for your singing and also songwriting. And Coco, Sujan, I think all of you, it's for your the soulfulness. I don't know. I don't know what to call it in your music. Uh, just if there are viewers. Right? If there are viewers that do not know much about the music, how would you describe your music? I mean, I want to talk the same way, but no. Uh, how would you describe your music? Um, for me, my music is more like a storytelling or else it's, it's just perspective. And then it's, I'm not like a commercial artist. I'm more like organic. And I just want to be true to myself. And then as long as the viewers can relate to my music, they vibe with my tracks, and who is your inspiration in that case? Ah, oh, there are a lot because uh, I listen to a lot of genres of music. But I would say Novo Amor and mm -hmm. artists like Bon Iver, inspire me. Parsons. Yeah. I mean, like, even if I don't know much about it. <laughs> 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 what about you? I think adding to what Sujan said, um, I'm more of as of now. I think. I think it's safe to say I'm more of an experimental artist because I'm still trying to find my sound. I think that's also one of the main reasons why I'm delaying so much, like delaying all my projects. But I think, oh wow, I think it's safe to say <laughs> that I'm still trying to find my sound. But like, if I have to, like you know, like um, put it in a specific box or something, it would be more on uh, soul, 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 and a little bit on folk pop kind of, yeah. So I'm not much of an extrovert, so songwriting, my music is more of like my way of telling my story. So it's like a diary, a journal that I keep, but with music. So that's that. And when it comes to genres and all, I look up to a lot of old R&B, pop, soul, you know, souls like my jam. And, you know, hip hop influences are also there. So basically like a mashup of so since you guys are somewhat in the same genre, will you ever find you guys in a same song collaborating? <laughs> what do you guys do? Of course. Of course. <laughs> Please give me the credit when you guys release <laughs> that song. <laughs> uh, for our viewers to know more about you guys um, and Coco, you guys and Coco. <laughs> uh, what, what besides? Uh, 
besides singing, you know, what do you guys enjoy again? Of course, teaching, but you know, if there's anything else, what do you enjoy? Me, uh, I love playing football and then, yeah, sports, football, that's more of it, yeah. I think <laughs> for me it would be more of like, I'm more of an indoor person, so uh, when I'm not teaching or when I'm not recording and all, all of that, uh, you will find me in my bedroom. So I like to be in my bedroom and watch like YouTube videos or vlogs, you know, just to wind down. Yeah, that's what I like to do. And what about you, Tiki? I enjoy painting and baking. Mm, nice. <laughs> yes. And um, TK and Coco, so we don't know your full, I'm sorry, <laughs> we don't know your full names. So tell us more about that also, why TK? Maybe. So my real name is actually Tejavino. So it's quite long. Um, and I think uh, if I have to commercialize, you know, my music and any of that, Tejavino seems to, it, it just becomes too long. Nah? So yeah, I decided to just use my nickname, which is Coco. Yeah. Well, my birth name is Tsiti Kamzak. So that's quite, you know, even when, uh, you know, teachers and all used to look at my name, they were like, okay, how do you pronounce this, right? So it's like, Tsiti Kamzak. And as Coco said, it's not very commercial, you know? So I just started using my initials, TK. So TK, them too. Um, TK and Coco, since you guys have other jobs also, I mean, besides music, I'd want to know how do you handle it? Because teaching and also TK, you're doing your PhD. I mean, it must be so much work, right? So how do you balance and how do, in that, uh, and I do understand that in the music scenario, you have to be consistent if you want to be in the market. So how do you balance that? Actually, that's one of the uh, challenges that I face to remain, you know, consist uh, consistent and relevant in the industry. But since I'm like doing my own PhD research work and all, you know, it's hectic. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you'll do anything for the things you love, right? So like, I especially make time out for my music. Like even though I'm working for like, say three weeks straight, I need a week off just for music. So that's how I plan things and I micromanage a lot. So, <laughs> you know, I can just make do with the timing. And what about you, Coco? I think uh, just about everything you said. <laughs> uh, yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many uh, uh, you guys need to be you know um, constantly improving also when it comes to your skills and also I think so. Uh, what do you guys do for that? You guys take I mean of course Coco when you teach uh, you also learn. But what about you also Sujan? Like you practice or how is that? Yes, uh, practice is one key factor, and then apart from that, meeting new people. Uh, we learning from the experience, like everyone I meet, they have something that I have to learn from. So, consistency, and good amount of practice and meeting people and, and just working on the art, the sound, I think that keeps us going. And TK, you're mostly uh, not here in Nagaland, but when you make music, when you when there's production wise, um, if I'm not mistaken, you work more with uh, people here, yeah. production houses more here in London. So how do you coordinate that also? And so actually what works is my producer, he was uh, previously based in Delhi. So it was very convenient for me to, you know, go down and get things recorded done. So what I usually do is um, I make demos, I send it over to my uh, producer, then we brainstorm over FaceTime and then we set dates specifically the when I get leaves okay. and then the couple of days that I'm here we just now he's based in Dimapur so like the couple of days off that I get I come and I just crash at the studio and we just work like horses <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's how you put up good music I mean and uh, coming to your uh, as we know that uh, music when it comes to music as a career here in Nagaland specifically we still have the mentality of our parents or the uh, the older generations that okay government job government job although we still have that mentality right and we can't, we cannot deny that so in this scenario how how has you know how has the support been from your family are they supportive of your musical career your musical journey how is it it's kind of positive but at the same time there is like a, a future you know like security like 
what what you are going to become what you're going to do but at the same time we we chose music because of the art we love doing that so despite all of this we try to manage and try to improve ourselves and hopefully the scene is growing here in Dimapur India itself we have Lola Poloza music festivals coming in so I think that's that's like a door for musicians uh, you know to do what they're doing I think with time they will be where they're supposed to be and what about your Coco? Like, how has the support been from your family when it comes to your musical journey or career? Mm -hmm. So initially, um, it was rather challenging because they wanted me to either become a doctor or an IS officer, all of that stuff. But I think with time, um, they've slowly started to, uh, you know, accept it. And I'm grateful that now they're very supportive. Yeah, so. And what about you? For me, I know for sure that my parents are quite scared of the future aspect when it comes to music but they have this one golden rule where you know uh, as long as I do well in my other fields like my studies and all I can do whatever I want with music as well right. uh, when you guys are constantly uh, trying to put up new music I'm pretty sure that sometimes uh, your creativity also runs out right I mean it happens right so what do you guys to do to refresh your mind again or if you guys are having some difficult times today, what do you guys do to refresh your mind again and get back to work again with the music or your creative creativity? And uh, it's it's better not to force it out if you are if you are in a verge of like you know writer's block or something like that. So it's better you don't force it out. Just take a time off. Do the things you love to do. There are other factors like you, you can go play sports. You can hang out with people. You can. But because if you force it out, like, oh, I have to do this, I have to do this, then it's not going to be organic, it's not going to be natural. So just take a time off, refresh your mind, because our body, you know, the recharge thing. <laughs> recharge thing. <laughs> recharge thing. <laughs> yeah. So that's more like it, like, just recharge yourself and then get back to work. You guys want to add up anything to that? For me, I... I usually do this when I feel burned out. I usually plan a trip to refresh the mind. Or, you know, I focus my energy on uh, painting. That kind of helps me, uh, like, put a new perspective on things, you know. And kind of in, in, uh, inuates the, you know, creativity flow. So that's what I do. Okay. But again, when you're painting or something, you might get idea, right? Branches. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 like that. Okay, I'll do um, Also, in this music um, scenario here in Nagaland, now, before it was just mostly cover songs, you know, covering songs, but then uh, now that the crowd or the listeners want more, uh, you know, um, original songs, and we cannot deny that. I mean, all of you also, like we are coming, everyone is coming up with original songs. To sustain in this scenario, how important do you think it is for the artist to actually be able to, you know, write their own songs and, you know? Uh, if you are taking music as a profession, like uh, if you're going full time in, it, it takes a lot of energy and effort. So once you're in, I would just suggest, like according to my experience, it's like, uh, try to write more original music, try to write more music because when you play in festivals or bigger festivals, they look for artists with original tracks. And you can't, like, maybe there are a couple of artists that do one cover or something, but the more original you have, like, the more people, you know, you'll discover more of your sound. So it's very important to have uh, your own tracks, yeah. even though it takes time, but it's worth it. And what about you? I think your songs or your track is uh, ultimately your identity, right, at the end of the day. So people will recognize you from the songs that you put out. So uh, I think I speak this for myself when I say this because I've only been posting cover songs. But if you sing a lot of cover songs, people will, um, I mean, notice you as like cover artist. And then that, you know, that origin originality or that identity is not there. So. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say from there. Actually, when, uh, while we're in this topic, I'd like to categorize musicians into two categories, okay? So we have these singers and we have artists. 
So both are entertainers. We entertain in different ways. So singers, what they usually do is they perform whatever song the crowd wants, entertain, like cover artists and all. And as artists, we try to, you know, tell stories, write our own thing, you know, get to connect with people through our art. So I think there's a big def like a definition to it when you ask, like, what do you want to be? Like, I want to be a singer, that's something. But as an artist, it is very important to have your own music. And you know, the key skills and qualities that you think that uh, that is essential for success in this music scenario here in Nagaland? Of course, uh, talent, your work, on uh, consistency. And one important factor, like uh, each field should use it, discipline. Uh, I've seen artists like uh, they're really talented, but if they're laid back and stuff like that, that's not gonna, you know, you can't complain later like, oh, I'm not there. I'm not there. Be disciplined with your work, well, with your time flow, you know, get your work ready. You know? So discipline, consistency, and then. Your work, end of the day, your practice, your work, networking. Yeah, networking. networking. It's very much important, networking. <laughs> what do you have? Pretty to much. The same. I think, yeah, 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 same, yeah. Same interview. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming back to networking uh, and marketing also, when it comes, uh, we, in this field, in this field, I mean, in this field here in Nagaland, when it comes to music, we do have somewhat now we, of course we don't have platforms like uh, other places but then all of the uh, platform though but at the same time revenue generation like so when it comes to that how important do wonder how important is networking and marketing and how can one do that also networking is more like a business like the, the better reach you have the more places you go the more people know know about you, your sound, your music, that's going to open more doors. So I feel it's very much important. Uh, during the start, I was a little bit of embryvert. Like, you know, when I meet people, I don't talk much. But slowly, slowly, uh, people were like, uh, my friends, they tell me, they suggest me like, go oh, talk, talk to people, get to know more people. The more people you know, it's going to open more doors. Mm -hmm. So I feel networking, marketing networking. is very much important. And it's, it's coming up like uh, listen events. Mm. They, they started their music, they network, like through networking, they, you know, promote my songs. They, so it's very much important. Do you want to add up? That's, that's a uh, whole truth to it, you know. Network and networking and marketing is basically your key to success in the industry. So no matter how good you are, no matter how talented you are, like if your networking and marketing is not good then you're not going anywhere so that is true and i think that's what we artists should also learn and even if we can't do it ourselves there are you know people who do that for us you know so there are many doors like to be open eh? so if you don't feel uh, added we can always hire people or you know get people to network and market for us basically again we can say that okay for an artist you have to be humble and then know know that you have to go and then search for opportunities yourself also not just wait for opportunities exactly. to come exactly that, that's the thing about uh, artists out here in Nagaland we basically do everything starting from writing music to you know booking sessions to recording to searching for gigs and everything so like an artist can't do everything on his or her own, so we need like people who to manage us, you know. How important do you think uh, it is for a music video to be of good quality for your song to also sell? Do you, would you say that? Uh, of course, the music itself, the audio, the music should be really good. Yeah. <laughs> it then comes the music video, the visuals, to, you know. It, it all comes down to budget. Like, the bigger the budget, the better the video. Of course, even me, if I work on any track, I would like my music video to be that level. But when you work with, uh, when you approach people, then you, you know, with your budget, you come. <laughs> but again, with that, uh, being in the market, music videos, with the production houses, uh, is a pressure for the, I think it, it would be a pressure for the artists also, right? To be like, okay, I have to invest in the music video as well. So what do you have to say about that? Like with the changing world, like earlier, people used to listen to, cassettes and record players so they used to focus mainly on, mainly on the music but you know as times change visual has became so important especially with this k-pop 
scene, you know, their visuals are like spectacular that, you know, people get attracted to that. So as artists, we feel pressure to put out good videos for, you know, good music. But it's not, uh, the problem we face is like, we can't afford to make videos for all the songs that we want to. So we have to be very selective of the project that we want to invest in. So, you know, that's the deal. And b good visuals, good views, good views, success. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes. <laughs> what, what about you? What, uh, Coco, would you like to add up more to that? I think uh, um, we are catering to uh, basically a global audience. So our listeners are very selective. There are some people who, you know, are just happy with, uh, you know, listening to your songs on Spotify. They don't care. They don't watch YouTube videos. But again, 80 per no, I mean, not 80 percent, maybe like 60 or 50 ish. You know, they they're m they're more into visuals. So they would watch your music video. After that. Yeah. Spotify like that no they, they prefer to watch the music video first before going to your song yeah. now um, we, uh, when it comes to Nagalan here I think uh, if I'm not mistaken how the you know how the artists earn like when it comes to revenue I think it mostly mostly shows right so what do you have to say about that uh, is there enough platform now would you say that it's changing um. I would say like it's growing. It's not there right now. So it's mostly shows, but again, the revenues from the shows are pretty less, very less. So it'll take time, but there's progress. There's progress. The rest is all from Spotify and mm -hmm. YouTube. Do you guys want to end up? Well, like Sujan said, we're not quite there yet. Definitely, the platforms are coming up, improving there, but I don't feel like we're quite there yet to, you know, sustain all the, cater to all the art, artists. Before, uh, bef before this, a lot of artists used to not complain, but put it out that uh, there used to be certificate culture. Now you go yeah. perform and then give you certificates. <laughs> and yeah. I, I, there was a very good drill also. <laughs> uh, so do you think that that culture, that certificate culture is like, changing now or what would you say or is it still the same when it comes to you performing just getting paid with certificate i think it's definitely changing you know for a good cause <laughs> but uh, it's changing but there are some organizations that still do the certificate thing so as artists we should be very you know bold because you know that's where we make a living right so like an artist compromising to that, you kind of disrespect your art. So we should stick to, you know, no pay, no gig. Agreed. Okay, um, now that you like to answer so much, I'll go to the next, <laughs> next question, okay. Uh, talking about shows, right, I also have quite a lot of friends who are in the music scenario and they would always say if you want to support me then all you have to do is show up to my show, show up to my show. So what do you guys have to say about that? Uh, the more people they show up for you, for your show, like uh, my friends they turned up, a lot of my friends they turned up for my, uh, my recent show. I felt comfortable, I felt much more like home. Encouraged. Uh, yeah, I feel encouraged, and they were like really proud. They were like all standing in front, like you know, in the front. Of them. I was really happy to see them, and then it feels nice. Yeah. You feel you feel the energy going once you get. You know, it's, it's nice to see familiar faces. Yeah. This sort of people, and they knew the song, so they were singing along. So it made it more special. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Google and <it's> team. <laughs> yeah, just the same. How important is you for is it for your friends and family members to actually come and support? Like, I just want to know that. Showing up is actually really, really important. Like, uh, an artist without any audience, or you know, that's so sad. Even think about it. So we are we sing for ultimately um, our art or our music. It's to serve the community or the people. So if people don't show up, then, you know, like our audience is like our main, uh, I mean, how do I put it, like target or goal or yeah. 
Now coming back to songwriting again, uh, since you guys are all you write your own songs also, right? Uh, I would want to know more about how how's the process like, especially uh, I'll start with you, Sudan. Like, how's the song process like? Where do you start? Where do you draw inspirations? In the Kenya start kuna it the end kuna Um, like from what I've noticed, like all my previous tracks and the tracks I've been working on, like I usually work in a particular time. It's mostly in the morning or six to eight, between six to eight, and then I just sit by with my guitar. I work with the melody. I listen to some a very like opposite genre of music that I don't listen to. I just listen to jazz or some sometimes bossa nova stuff and just understand the rhythm process. And then I just sit. And then morning hours are completely quiet, from six to eight. You know, it's it's really nice to sit. And then I just work on the melody first. The chord progression, the melody, and then later the next day or the in the evening, I just sit and on top of the melody, I write the lyrics. So how long does it take? Like, any basically just typing? That depends. Like sometimes it's just done in a couple, like one hour, two hours. Sometimes it takes two, three days. Sometimes the week after. But we just save the audio. Like the stupid mm -hmm. audios, also we just record. And when it comes to lyrics, is there anyone as such in your family or friend circle that you know you send this? Can you say in you know, for rectification or something I, I, like that? I, I, I send it to my friend Adi Coco. She she I'll ask her how is the something and then she she give the feedback. Sure, feedback. Feedback. And what about you, Coco? What, uh, I would like to know the whole uh, songwriting process. Mm -hmm. So um, I think for me, what, what I've uh, realized is collaborative projects really works best for me. You know, when you have, like I've um, worked with, I mostly when it comes to songwriting, I mostly work with Sujan. So, um, you know, you just basically bounce ideas off each other. And that way, I, I don't know, um, I don't get stuck because when I try writing on my own, so maybe I'll try writing the first verse and the chorus and after that, it's blank. But when it comes to collaboration, when I collaborate with someone else, ideas just flow like it easily, you know. So I think most of my projects are like basic collaborations and so forth. Yeah. And what about you? Uh, when it comes to songwriting, there's no particular formula for me. But what I generally do is I'm very melody oriented. So I play around with my piano, then. I figure out some chords, some melody line, and then I just start putting words to that. And then when it comes to collaborative writing, I don't feel very comfortable, you know, like I feel like my uh, thing gets diluted, my art gets diluted by the influences. So what I usually do, I just shut myself off and I just, you know, try to feel all that micro feelings and all, exaggerate them and, you know, just go with the melody and the lyrics yeah. so you guys prefer different yeah. kind yeah. of songs so there are different yeah. styles of songs yeah different styles that's there's how no that's particular a, that's, a, that's the beauty of music yeah. <laughs> just um, uh, uh, so is there anything as such that uh, your personal experiences or where do you try, uh, draw your inspirations from when it comes to song writing or is this just on the spot you see something and write about it or something like that it depends. Sometimes I listen to people's story. My friends, they just talk about their life. I listen to their story. I just try to write it. Sometimes it's movies. And there will be a sad scene and I'll be like, oh wait, we can write a song about it. And then I'll just try to picture some sad stuff in my head early morning. And then I'll just write about it. With so, coffee, right? Yeah, with coffee, <laughs> coffee, strong black coffee. <laughs> That's more Right. What about you, Coco? Okay, so um, I don't know. Um, just mundane activities, I think, you know, and um, yeah, just mundane day-to-day -day activities. Or it can either be uh, if I maybe get a nice melody, or when I'm listening to music and I find maybe a hook very interesting, then I try to incorporate that into uh, my style of singing and maybe just add lyrics. So it just happens anytime, like it's it's spontaneous, I think. Yeah. You guys make it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I don't mean to 
sound conceited, but <laughs> you know, when it comes to songwriting, I focus a lot on myself, feelings, my feelings, and my opinions. So I'm an overthinker, so I feel a lot. Like I feed off people's energy a lot. I notice the slightest change in, you know, feelings or personalities or whatever character. So what I do is I focus on all that. Recently, actually, there was this incident where it was about a friend and that affected a lot in my life. So it just took me 30 minutes to pick up the guitar and just finish up one song. So like inspiration just comes like that, you know, as long as you are focused on your feelings and like emotions and you try to deliver your like your what you're feeling, you're trying to deliver to, to, to your music. So like as long as you are trying that, it just happens, you know, it just comes out like that. And sometimes I get shocked. Oh, did I write this? <laughs> How did I write this? <laughs> yeah. But in the moment, it happens. Okay, okay, just... It's all about the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything as such that you guys want to say to uh, youngsters, right? Who want to take up uh, music as a career? Or would say, like, they, they want to start off. How do they start off? And uh, is there anything as such you want to share? Um, we have to keep in mind and we have to be realistic about the world, how it works, you know? Uh, you do music, but you have to have a budget or you have to have, you know, some... Your monetary should be good in terms of that. So I would just suggest, like, do some work, you know, try to... Don't just depend fully on music to sustain your livelihood because you have to be very realistic. It's going to be really difficult. You have to spend for your production, for your songwriting, for your traveling maybe, for uh, for your videography, and it's in terms of tens of thousands when you do that. So uh, have faith in the process. It might take five years, six years, uh, but just be consistent, be disciplined, disciplined with your art, not only just inside your room, but with among people, be humble, grow your network, meet a lot of people, know a lot of people, and. Try to grow your music through that. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, hard work and perseverance, of course, because um, harsh reality is it's not easy, you know. We, as creatives, we tend to um, get discouraged very easily as well, because it's not easy. So you just need to be consistent and keep working on your art. Well, if it's for starters, I'd say, you know, artist life, life is not easy. Like Coco said, you know, we have to work so hard, so like hard work is must. And if you, when it comes to songwriting, you know, like if you're having doubts about expressing, you're like putting out your music, just go for it, you know, like you won't know until you put your music out. You won't know. Just don't keep hoarding it to yourself and thinking, you know, whether if I'm good or not. Mm -hmm. Just put it out and you'll know. And that's how we grow as artists, you know. When we put more music out, when people give their inputs, we grow. So, like, just do it. I just forgot one question. I'll add that also, okay? But I think this is important. Uh, as artists, I'd want to know what are the changes that you would want to see in the music scene here in Nagaland? Um. Lesser certificates, <laughs> uh, more funds coming in, uh, and then uh, follow, be punctual, of course. A lot of time, a lot of people yeah. are not punctual. Yeah. The music and punctuality, discipline is needed. And uh, trust the event process. It's growing, it's growing. I, you can't as, uh, like, expect much. You have to see where we are also. It's not the United States or something. It will take a lot of time, but grow with the process, and then you you never know. You might today you, or tomorrow you might open up your mail, and then you might see a mail from some bigger producers or artists reaching out to you and say, "Hey, I discovered you through Instagram." So use your social media also as a platform to put up songs. <laughs> um. Changes. I'd say, you know, one thing, I'd, like me, I haven't been based here for such a long time, so like I don't know how it is right now. But one thing I'd like to see uh, with the music community in Nagaland is to support each other, you know. 
I think that's very important. Like, because as musicians, we understand each other. We, you know, get to appreciate each other's art more. So I think. Uh, just a normal person coming up to you and saying like, "Oh, I love your song," and a musician saying that, "Oh, your song is dope." It has a you know, a big spectrum of uh, impact. So like you know, uh, respecting each other's art. If you like it, like please show up. You know, na? support each other. I think that's what would make Nagaland artists grow a lot more. Also. You wanna add up anything, Coco? Yeah. Um, adding to whatever Tikin has said. Um, show your support by showing up to shows. No, that's, I think that's very important. Yeah. Compliment never costs anything, you know? <laughs> so just, you're not forcing them, please compliment or uh -huh. something like that, but if you like it, at least come right. Kindness, right. Is love. Kindness is love. And uh, uh, I forgot a million dollar question for, I think for the viewers. Is, are you guys working on, I mean, when, is your, when are you guys releasing your new albums or singles? Just a sneak peek for, the viewers as well. Well, I don't have specific dates yet. I'm still doing promotions for my previous EP, Chasing Foxes, which is out last year, uh, towards the end in November. So I'm still doing promotions and I have a couple of shoots for that. So that's going to be done by this year. I'll probably be able to put it out. And then I'm also working on uh, a couple of projects. Uh, an album is involved. So like, let's see, with my work and music, if given the time i'll try to put it out as soon as possible so watch out for my space <laughs> what about both of you um I'm, I'm working on new tracks hopefully this year and uh, for those who don't know me my name is sujan Lee. you can find me out on <laughs> spotify my tracks ocean of time they're out there for like past two three years so of course just go rediscover it and yeah. show your love and I hope to see you all during my next event. Hopefully, if you all yeah. we catch up. Mm -hmm. I'm surely going to talk if you all come. If you guys don't know, you guys wouldn't regret checking it out anyway. <laughs> That's what I would say. <laughs> yeah. uh, Coco, what about you? Any projects? Um, there is a collaboration coming up. So I think it should be out uh, very soon. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Look out for that. Okay, guys, I think that's all we'll have for today. Thank you so much once again. We, uh, we have, I've taken a lot of your time today. I'm pretty sure that you guys had other schedules also. I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> and thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you guys here and having, you know, getting to have a conversation with you guys and also getting to know you guys more. You guys have been putting a lot of good music and I'm pretty hopeful and confident that you guys will do, you know, the same again but more good music uh, wishing you guys uh, all the best for your future endeavors thank you so much that's all we have for this conversation before we end up i would like to thank juro cafe uh chumu Kedima, for giving us this beautiful space to host this interview and if you want to know more about juro cafe please watch the video attached that's all we have for now keep watching on routine Juro Coffee House is a newly launched coffee house located in CT Square, Chumugidima. What sets Juro Coffee House apart is its commitment to using coffee beans sourced directly from local farmers in Nagaland. A go-to destination for those seeking a delightful combination of aromatic coffee and an exceptional culinary journey. 